American musician Prince achieved worldwide fame in the 1980s with 1999 and Purple Rain, the latter album also serving as the soundtrack for the popular film of the same name. Prince's early music career saw the release of Prince, Dirty Mind and Controversy, which drew attention for their fusion of religious and sexual themes. He then released the popular album 1999 and Purple Rain, cementing his superstar status with number one hits like When Doves Cry and Let's Go Crazy. A seven-time Grammy winner, Prince had a prodigious output that included later albums like Diamonds and Pearls, The Gold Experience and Musicology. Famed singer, songwriter and musical innovator Prince was born Prince Rogers Nelson on June 7, 1958 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. His parents were John Nelson, a musician whose stage name was Prince Rogers, and Matty Shaw, a jazz singer who performed with the Prince Rogers Band. Prince became interested in music at a young age and taught himself how to play piano, guitar and drums. His parents broke up when he was about 10 and he and his sister split their time between their parents' homes. He eventually ran away and moved in with neighbours, the Anderson family. In high school, Prince formed the band Grand Central, later known as Champagne. In 1978, Prince was signed to Warner Brothers Records. In a 2009 interview, Prince revealed that when he was a child, he suffered from epileptic seizures and that he was teased in school. He said, early in my career, I tried to compensate by being as flashy and as noisy as I could. In 1978, Prince dropped his debut album, For You, which was followed by Prince in 1979. He played practically all of the instruments on the albums, and the sophomore release contained his first top 20 pop hit, the easygoing I Want to Be Your Lover. The critically acclaimed Dirty Mind dropped in 1980, consisting of material that was graphic in its exploration of sexuality and fantasy. Controversy in 1981 continued playing with the themes of its predecessor, as seen with the dance-oriented title track, which reached number three on the R&B charts, as well as songs like Sexuality and Do Me Baby. The singer found international success with the release of his 1982 album, 1999, which included the top 20 title track, an exquisite synth funk ode about nuclear doomsday, as well as the top 10 hits, Little Red Corvette and Delirious. With his band The Revolution, Prince went on to create the classic album Purple Rain in 1984, which also served as the soundtrack to the film of the same name, grossing almost $70 million at the US box office. Co-starring Apollonia Cotero, the movie garnered an Academy Award for Best Original Song Score. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. The melancholy title track Purple Rain reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100, while the hits When Doves Cry and Let's Go Crazy both reached number one. The soundtrack offered two other hits, I Would Die For You and Take Me With You. Prince simultaneously became a well-known visual icon with his trademark curls, flowing jackets and ruffled attire with punk embellishments. 1985 saw the release of Around the World in a Day, which had the top 10 tracks Raspberry Beret, a whimsical mid-tempo tune, and Pop Life. The record continued to feature Prince's penchant for playing a range of instruments and desire to impart messages of self-love as seen with Paisley Park, a track inspired by the name of his Minneapolis studios. In 1986, Prince released his eighth studio album, Parade, which included his pulsating number one pop R&B single, Kiss. Parade served as the soundtrack for the artist's second film, Under the Cherry Moon, which he directed and starred in. After the disbanding of the revolution, Prince was able to consolidate various shelved projects into what ultimately became 
the double album Sign O The Times in 1987, with the title track reaching number three on the pop charts and number one in R&B. The album was known for its stark commentary on social issues, yet also contained fun jams like You Got The Look, a raucous duet with Scottish singer Sheena Easton that reached number two on the pop charts. Sino The Times was easily among Prince's most critically acclaimed albums, yet its sales lagged in the US, finding more of an audience in Europe, where the artist launched a successful tour. Maintaining a prodigious output, Prince released Love Sexy in 1988, known for its album cover featuring a photo of the artist in the nude, as well as the top five up-tempo R&B hit Alphabet Street. By the time he released his 11th studio album, the soundtrack to Batman, in 1989, Prince had become one of America's most commercially successful pop artists, continually making waves on the charts. Batman offered up the number one romp, Bat Dance, as well as the top five R&B hit, Party Man. The early 1990s marked the launch of the new power generation, Prince's latest band that featured a blend of contemporary R&B, hip-hop, jazz and soul along with the vocals of Rosie Gaines. The group was first called out in the soundtrack to Graffiti Bridge, a 1990 sequel to Purple Rain that didn't fare well at the box office, yet still yielded the top 10 track Thieves in the Temple. With the new power generation's artistic contribution, Prince found success with his album Diamonds and Pearls in 1991, which rose to number three on the Billboard 200 album chart. Diamonds included the romantic title ballad, the industrial strength Get Off, and the playful Insatiable, and the saucy number one single Cream. Prince's work with the new power generation continued to unashamedly toy with ideas around sexuality, gender norms, and the body. In the fall of 1992, Prince had signed a record $100 million deal with Warner Brothers, which was considered the largest recording and music publishing contract in history at the time, and allowed him the freedom to pursue TV, film, book, and merchandising deals separately. As a comparison, fellow industry giants Michael Jackson and Madonna had $60 million plus contracts that were all inclusive. Provocative performances aside, Prince had well established himself as an in-demand collaborator and behind the scenes player whose songs were remade by other artists. In the mid 80s, Chaka Khan released a highly successful cover of his 1979 tune, I Feel For You, while Sinead O'Connor's biggest hit was Prince's Nothing Compares to You. The Art of Noise and Tom Jones reached the UK Top 5 in 1988 with a remake of Kiss and Alicia Keys covered How Come You Don't Call Me Anymore on her own 2001 debut. Prince also worked on specific album tracks for performers like Khan, Madonna, Tevin Campbell, Kate Bush, The Time, Martika, Patti LaBelle, and Janelle Monae. He was behind the group girl Vanity Six, led by singer-actress Vanity, and their number one dance hit Nasty Girl. And he sent a song to the all-women's band The Bangles that they would record to great effect, reaching number two with the lush ode to a stressful workday, Manic Monday. In 1992, Prince and the New Power Generation released the Love Symbol album. Though embraced by some critics, sales did not fare as well as Diamonds and Pearls. The Love Symbol album only managed to have one top 10 hit, the transcendent single Seven, though My Name Is Prince and the carnal Sexy MF garnered some attention as well. The following year, Prince released the compilation box set, The Hits, The B-Sides, which had an array of popular songs as well as the newly released Pink Cashmere, a tender number sung in falsetto. The lack of success for the Love Symbol album created tension between Prince and his record label Warner Brothers. Over the ensuing years, the singer's career went through a roller coaster of ups and downs. Turned off by feeling controlled by his label, Prince changed his name to the unpronounceable Glyph, 
a fusion of female and male astrological symbols which he used until 2000. During that time, he was more frequently referred to as the artist formerly known as Prince, and his new symbol was not embraced by most fans. He also started making appearances with the word slave drawn on the side of his face, meant to convey the great disdain he had for his label. Prince did release the 1995 album The Gold Experience during this time of duress, and scored another top five song with The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. Once he was released from all contractual obligations to Warner Brothers, Prince released the triple album fittingly entitled Emancipation in 1996, which went on to become certified platinum and featured the soul remake Betcha by Golly Wow. Several other albums affiliated with his new power generation label soon followed, including Crystal Ball in 1998 and Rave Unto the Joy Fantastic in 1999. After several years of relative obscurity, Prince returned to the limelight in 2004 to perform at the Grammy Awards with Beyonce Knowles the same year he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That spring he released Musicology with a tour that became the top concert draw in the United States. The album won two Grammys and added another dreamy ballad, Call My Name, to the Prince Canon. His next album, 3121, was released in 2006. That year he wrote and performed Song of the Heart for the animated film Happy Feet and won a Golden Globe for Best Original Song for the composition. In 2007, he performed during the Super Bowl halftime show on a massive stage shaped as his famous symbol amid pouring rain. The event was watched by 140 million fans. 2010 was the year of accolades for Prince. He was not only lauded by Billboard.com as the greatest Super Bowl performer ever, but he was also featured in Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World and earned a Lifetime Achievement Award from the BET Awards. He ended the year with an induction into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Prince also continued to deliver the fruits of his studio efforts with Planet Earth in 2007, Lotus Flower in 2009, and in a joint deal with the Daily Mirror 2010 and 2010. With the advent of the internet as the primary force for distributing music, Prince was against the trend of having songs shared at will on the web. He rallied against the idea of providing his songs to online music platforms without proper upfront compensation and profit sharing, with his tracks eventually only found on the Jay-Z-backed streaming service title. One of the few pop artists to have full ownership of his masters, he was diligent via Web Sheriff in erasing examples of his music, including videos and live performances from the internet. On April the 21st, 2016, Prince was found dead at his Paisley Park compound in Minnesota. The week prior, his plane had made an emergency landing and the singer was hospitalized for what was purportedly a severe case of the flu, though reports later stated that the musician was actually given a life-saving safe shot for a Percocet overdose. The Carver County Sheriff's Department and Midwest Medical Examiner's Office launched an investigation into the cause of death. After the autopsy was performed, his remains were cremated and his close family and friends gathered for a small private funeral on April the 23rd. Almost two weeks after the musician's death, a lawyer revealed that Dr. Howard Kornfeld, a California-based physician who specializes in treatment for those dependent upon and addicted to pain medication, had been called upon by Prince's team to aid the musician. The performer had undergone hip surgery some years earlier and was believed to have endured recurring discomfort while giving concerts. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Prince song or perhaps an album of his that you like the most? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.